Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is your host, Chris Fuller. And I'm still super tall, Mark Hyde. (laughs) And on today's episode, we are going to be discussing how do you stay faithful in your Christian walk? This is something we've been mulling over a little bit and decided to bring it to you. So, Mark, are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. It's beginning to look a lot like, I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, it's December. December. What, 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 whether you like it or not, December's here, baby. Cookies everywhere. Which, you know, or, or, you know, last week I announced that it's my birth month, and now we are officially a week closer to my birthday. Oh, we're really close. We are getting dang close to my birthday. I think we're like a week out now. All I know is <laughs> if you want my mailing address, I will send it to you to send me all the coffees. He said for, for all birthday, the, all wow. the coffee, nothing like a beggar going, please, suck <laughs> now have some more, <laughs> but not, not folders, please. Not, oh, not, that's not all right. Folders. RTC family gang up together and get them nothing but folders what? at eight o'clock. <laughs> You're going to have like a whole stack of it. It's beginning to look a lot like I'm going to have a lot of donations for people this Christmas. Let's, I'm going to regrip, wow. re, regrip, regift the snot out of that. Wow. That's what I'm going to do. Ungrateful. No, I am I'm ungrateful. I'm kidding. <laughs> I am. I'm a little bougie with my coffee. It is right. what it is. So I really want to jump into this I question this music. before I forget it. Okay? Wait, wait, like a banter question? A banter question before I forget it. The music's not even over. I know, but it's there. So okay. uh, if you had to pick Narnia or Middle Earth. Ooh. Oh, since watching the Amazon Lord of the Rings, 100% Narnia. Really? Have you seen the the Amazon Prime Lord of the Ring I episodes? Have. After watching that crap go down, I ain't lived. I ain't touching Middle Earth. Why? If it was peaceful and I was chilling like a hobbit, I'd be down. You could be like one of the little brandy brandy. Yeah, but foots. you know how terrifying it would be to be like always being attacked by orcs. Yeah, and stuff. But think about post Return of the King. Okay, but that's different. Well, so. I'm thinking about all the video games, like Lord of the Rings, War in the North. You, oh, that was actually a okay, fun video okay, game. Okay, but you don't want to be like like Narnia. You're going to get frozen by the witch. You're going to be turned into a stone sculpture, especially because of your hair. Straight up, she can be like, I like that hair. And you're going to be like, ah! like Han Solo in the, in the Carbonite. But I feel like a lot of the mythical creatures and mythical beasts in Narnia are a little bit more palatable because there's a kid, it's a kid book. Bro, really? The eagles? More than the orcs and the Urukai and Gollum? They weren't the mythical creatures. What about the, the centaurs, the evil centaurs and whatever else in Narnia, man? They were, Those are dope. They were scary. I like centaurs. Being a Sagittarius and all. I like. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. We're gonna get into that. That astrology. Demon, that demonology. No, I don't believe in astrology at all. I just that's just I just know I'm a Sagittarius, and it's really dope that I get the centaur. But no, but seriously, so I I think I'd pick Narnia or Middle Earth because Middle Earth scares the bejesus out of me. Okay, man. no. All right, but have you no. read? Okay, so I've read all the Lord of the Rings. I love you, but you know I don't read like okay, that. So I do the I've done the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings. Okay. And I've done. I haven't done the uh, Samelian, Samelian, Samelian. I think is what it's called. <clears throat> uh, which I it's I forget where it happens. Is that the elf? That's not the elf one, right? I don't know. I, I've never read it, so I'm not sure okay. what story. There's one about in. the elves. But I've read I've read the Hobbit. I've read the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh-huh. So the main four. And I've read all the Narnia books. Okay. Every last one of them. But I would still be a Middle Earth guy. Really? Because I love the action. I'm an action guy. Action last means week, you're dead. Last week you heard I love the ballet. Today you're like, hey, he's an action guy. <laughs> Fuller is a very what's the, what's what I'm looking for here? Um, diverse. Di- uh, I was thinking something different. Well, freaking nuts. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you're nuts. You listen. The last you're time, wild, wait, bro. time out. The last time you said that word, people thought you were swearing. Oh. You better s- spell it out right now. What you just said. Um, F R E A K I N G. Okay, you're not allowed to use that word no more. 
because I, I get you tired. Are, you I are get tired. stupid wild. How about that? I get, I get tired weird. of having to go back and re-listen to episodes Sorry, to make Mark sure did not cuss again, guys. that you're not swearing. Mark just has a lisp problem. <laughs> He's like, don't I just, make fun of my speech impediment, I just guys. have a speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I had to go to speech therapy. You know how nice it is when kids talk about, like, because, okay, so our family, we, we have a lot of therapies that we go to. Sure. Physical, mental, emotional. All the kids have therapies in some regards for, for various things. Right. And we're talking about therapy, and we're... Beth and I try so hard to get into these kids' mind where therapy is not a bad thing in terms of like physical therapy or like, well, sure. why does it go to therapy? It's because why do you go to therapy? Oh, because something's wrong with me. It's like, no, remember, think of therapy as like a coach, as someone who wants you to get better. It's like you preparing know? for the big game. Exactly. Okay? Like just, therapy is literally to get the better big, at the, it. The big game is called life. And, and so and you're just your preparing. boy did not get much better with his speech impediment. Yes, you did. I you're still, fine. I still can't you say what grade um, Ava's going to be in next year, and I am not looking forward to saying that a lot. Sixth? Sixth grade. So, uh, yeah, what grade is your daughter going to? Um, the, Seth, the one grade. after fifth and the one before seventh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah, no. It's true. Like I can't say that word, and I can't say other words. But but either way, no, you, you just are— said other words. You are a very mysterious, mystical man. How about that? I'm a m- good mythical— Night, not morning. <laughs> yeah, because we, 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 that's copyrighted. We can't take that. But, uh, but no, good, I, I would say Narnia. Good, good mythical evening. <laughs> hey, thanks. Thanks, Red Link. Thanks, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. We did have an interesting question, though. Yeah, okay. Let's this get is, into I don't it. know if we talked to, have we talked about this? What's your favorite brand of car slash truck and why? Ooh, we have not. Are we talking about specific we talking models? About, are we talking about like models and are we st- like doing certain decades or just like say, of all your boy time? would love. Okay, so did you know Beth and I, like we, we were working on our budgeting and stuff like that and kind of think about what would one of our dream retirement goals would be. We both want to own a dope car. Well, like at the end, like you better we, figure out one car that you both. Well, no, like. that's what I'm saying okay. because <laughs> I'm like we are we're driving a big old stinking camper I was say, around. Because do you realize how many weddings you got to pay for? Oh, we're sending the mugs to Vegas. What uh, <laughs> what retirement do you think you're having? Hey, we made our fame on the courthouse. They can start their families in the courthouse. Wow! So that's a Beth joke. That's why it's funny. Um, but like, we're driving around this four trans in a minivan and a little blue car that just mainly is we're driving it so that we kids have something to drive when they're sixteen. We want something cool. So like when we're when we're old and retired, we want a cool car. So you, I would love a Studebaker. You know what? Janiel, I would love a Studebaker. Janiel would really love rather than a cool car. She'd really like a motorhome, like a, a straight up. She's been watching. That's that's like uh, Janelle from Sister, Sister Wives, Wives, which yeah. Sister Wives is a hot. Oh. Mess, man! Oh my goodness! So I follow. Cody is the biggest baby in all time, man. Oh, he's well. Okay, so years ago, years ago, I I said I wanted to meet Cody and hang out with them and like talk with them, and I still feel that way. But now it's not going to be so much talking as coaching and counseling on. Why are you an idiot? You 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 suck at all four marriages. Can we focus on maybe being good at one? Because, well, you're, I guess it's three marriages You know, now. With, with, oh, if you don't watch Sister Wives and you're trying Sorry. to catch up, it's too late. But, like, with, with Christine, like, you know, the, get, getting divorced, leaving Cody and whatever and all these different well, it's, things. it's and, not really. It's a spiritual divorce, That's true. They, they, they were never married in the first place. Because he's only legally married to Robin. Correct. And that he's only legally married to Robin because he's he only had to get. He's actually married to Robin. He had to get legally. Them other three well, wives don't he do nothing. He was legally married to Mary. Correct, first. But he got divorced from her. All on the basis because that was the only way to adopt Robin's kids. Correct. Which Correct. is, hey, I'm all for it. Like, like you're that, all for that polygamy. Was, that no, but that was a good reason, right? He was doing it out of the goodness of like wanting to bring them legally, into the I guess, right? But no, but that that's, that's not. A but good that's thing. the he, I remember him like one of the interviews. Like we were trying to show the world that the beauty of polygamy and that it can work and it's like nah bro all we he did, just, well he said he said, all we did was show him to the dysfunctionality. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like, yeah, you did because I mean I love Beth and you love Janelle. There ain't no way. No. Look, I have a hard time handling one. I can't even imagine um, four. Handling? No, bro. You have a hard time. Being handled you, by one. <laughs> wow. This show just became PG-13 all of a sudden. That is Not that uncomfortable. Way. Not that I way. I feel uncomfortable. Anywho. So we're talking about this cars. Is what, you know what? You really need to practice some some Romans 12, okay? Renew, and, renew my mind? And renew your mind. Yeah, but also the Apostle Paul says, don't forsake the marriage <laughs> either. <laughs> he said... Saga Solomon, baby. Wait, we just go end it there. He said, "Don't forsake." I would the rather have you as I am single. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Um, but anywho, anyway. So, so Janiel wants an RV. That was a really bad rabbit trail. It was. So Janiel so, wants an RV. So Janiel, really, Janiel would want an RV. But if I had to pick like a dope car, right? I'll just okay. If it's not a Studebaker, okay. I want a Challenger, baby. Okay, original so, Challenger. That's so, so hot. I think my dream car. 
1957 Chevy pickup truck. That exact year, because I love the body style. 1957 Chevy pickup truck. Like he's looking it up now. Get it in the images. But I would I would settle for like a, a 19. Oh, those are hot. Like a 19. Yeah, these are yeah. sweet, aren't they, dude? But I want the total they restored like, one for our I want the total or, uh, wood counseling. bed. I want the wood bed. Yeah, so um our it might have been a, I don't know, it might have been the Ford body. Maybe it's a Chevy. I don't know. But our chancellor up at Northland had one of those like originally so, and it was just chilling in the field. So the like there was kids who were working on cars and they restored it. If if I could awesome. if I couldn't get that, I would settle for like a nineteen fifty four to a nineteen fifty five Ford pickup truck. See, but I, one I'm of not those good two. with years. I love Studebakers. I think Studebakers are so cool. But also I'm obs- I'm obsessed with South Bend. If you want yeah, you well know? Studebakers are cool. But if you want like a real cool muscle car, nineteen sixty nine Plymouth Barracuda, that's what you those want. Those are hot. Or nineteen seventy. I guess I guess I, you could be okay with the nineteen seventy. So if we're talking about today's model, and I said, all right, Fuller, what car are you going to go buy right that's, now? That's reasonable. So I mean, trucks really aren't reasonable, uh, but not like what was it called? I'm going to go buy. I mean, I would love an Alfa Romeo. <laughs> I, I, no, <laughs> I would so love me an Alfa Romeo, man. I do have a dream but, dude, car for like modern day. See, I'm, I'm a Ramirez. Honda guy, man. I just want a Honda. I do not buy. I, I had to buy a Ford because I had to. That was the only car we could buy for our family. But we have a Toyota minivan. I love it. I have a little Hyundai okay. Sonata. It's not really little. But I'm a big Honda guy. I love Hondas. I can work on them. They're easy to work with. The parts aren't too expensive. Oh, what is it called? But check this out. My dream car yeah, always as a kid, though, was an Audi. I always wanted an, Aud- an Audi. Sorry, an Audi. I always wanted an Audi or I wanted a Beamer. Like a, a, oh, really? a BMW 526i. Suckers are hot. Not the, not the 325, because those are cheapies. We don't want the cheapy one. We want the 5. Oh, I cannot The BMW find. 5 Series. Right. I'm stalling right now, because you're no, looking I at know. something. I know. So, I can't find it. Do you want a Bavon? That, there, well, no. There's a Toyota version. Oh, there it is. Yeah, All right. The new electric truck they just kicked out? No. I no, want a GMC. 2022 Nexo fuel cell car. A what? It's a hydrogen car. It runs on hydrogen. Like it converts, oxygen, hydrogen? It converts hydrogen... In, in the atmosphere, into, into in, it, no, you 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 charge it with hydrogen, but it, it converts it into um, electricity. And so it basically, you're driving cells. a hydrogen bomb. You're driving a hydrogen dude, bomb, dude. But they're so cool. That's man. like saying I want my car to be powered by nukes. But they're so cool, bro. How much does that cost? It's though? hydrogen. Put, how much does that cost? So I've looked it up, right? So the starting cost you can get in for about fifty nine thousand dollars. Shut up! If what? you want the the upgraded uh, the, the upgraded model. the upgraded okay. model is about sixty four thousand dollars right now. And then what would you have to the buy in order to charge it? Like oh, I'm sure. Well, so here's the cool thing, right? They're running a special right now. Um, are they? The next the next five years worth of fuel are free. It's on them. They give you a, they give you. Five years worth of hydrogen fuel. That's weird. So it's like, so a tank of hydrogen gets you about 500 miles on one tank. Okay. Uh, so you figure, all right, I could, five, you know, five years worth of the 500 miles, of, you know, a week, basically. I could do that. I could do that. That'd be fun. I don't know why. It would just be fun. I mean, I thought That's, it'd be. I, I think it sounds cool. And no, I'm not. I'm one actually of, here for electric cars. I'm not going to lie. So I, think electric I am cars are not fantastic. because they are terrible for the environment. There's no way. That to, is true. The batteries to, are not good. They, the, 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 so mining all the, the, the lithium and stuff like that is horrible for the environment. And then how are you? They ha, Nobody has ever answered this question. How are you going to dispose of that battery? They're toxic waste. They're just chilling right now in California, aren't they? In the desert? No. no. Well, some of them are. But like, yeah. So you got all these batteries, these big, massive cells, which think about it, right? How long does a car battery last for? Uh, six, six, six years. They, they recommend between three to five years you change it. Okay. Okay. So how much do you think a battery cell right now in a Tesla costs? In a Tesla? Yep. Um, I looked it up in a h- hybrid, but I don't know what a Tesla is. So a Tesla is running anywhere between ten and $15,000 to replace the battery. Okay. Now that's assuming the body can last that long. So you're thinking about every three to five years, let's say seven years, okay. you're, you're dropping 15 grand. That's not okay. I am not here for the electric car. I'm just not. It's too expensive for me. I mean, the price tag, the initial get in the price tag alone, and then on top of that, now you're changing on a battery. Even if it lasted 10 years, would you want to drop 15 grand, 10 to 15 grand on a battery every I mean, say, now you say, have to budget it because it's a lot price, cheaper than say, gas. Say the price drops. Is it though? Because look at energy costs right now. So you're plugging in at your house. Have you noticed your energy bill gone up? 
Because it has. I'm on auto pay, so I, I don't okay, know. Okay, well, your energy bill's gone up. It, okay. went, it went up earlier this year. Okay. By a lot. So over 10 years, it's probably going to go up even more. So really, are you saving? I don't know. I don't, I'm, scared, I'm scared to, to me, answer any question to right me, now. To me, it's like the, uh, the solar panel argument, you know, where people are like, oh, solar panel, it'll pay for itself in five years, and you'll get credit back because you're, you're charging onto the grid. In all reality, it never works that way. Ask Brandon Soche. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's our next oh, question? Uh, Sorry. This is an easy one. Cat or dog? Ooh. Dog. Neither. <laughs> I've had them all. Cats are I'm easier. Tired. I would love a dog. I am but tired I have... of animals. So my buddy Devin, he he flat out told me the other day. I, I was making a joke about a dog. He goes, the day you buy a dog is the day that I show up and take that dog from you. I think that. Because he's like, I you don't de- need a dog. Well, that wasn't just the other day. Devin and I both said he that. He says at, that a lot. We said that at your old house when we first met Pastor Michael. Yeah, he, and he said that again last week. Yeah. Because you don't, you, yeah, we we'd seen you with the animals, bro. It didn't go so well. And if you are if you're a rewinder, you remember me having a dog for less than forty eight hours, and I had to give him back. And a cat. Well, my mom has celery now. And I a miss cat. I miss celery. I actually liked celery. I like cat. If I had to pick though, probably cat. Cats I'm, are like easier cat to maintain. So much easier. I mean, litter boxes are gross. They are, but they have self cleaners. Right, but I would be gone for like. I mean, I mean, think about it. like when I went and visited Beth. I just filled up celery's food bowl. My mom trekked him after like three and, days. And he, and he was, was just fine. Bro was good chilling. He was fine. I mean, homeboy ate all his food like in one day, but he has enough fat cells and fat <laughs> reserves just to be able to continue on going. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So, so that was, that was, man, we got going on the, cars. Y'all were yeah. expecting to hear all yeah, that. Yeah, no. So the coffee we're drinking tonight is uh, water. water and tea. Because your boys want to go to sleep after this. Because last week when we recorded, I had an anxiety attack from being too caf- caffeinated after the uh And that's not podcasting. good. It's not a good thing that is not a That is not a good reputation to have no, for on the show. No. So, Which uh, probably makes sense why we were so stinking hyper last week. That that probably makes or last night episode, but last recording, like three, the two, last th- two recordings, the last three out of four episodes, I guess. So yeah, because yeah. last week we was Advent, but this is five, so it's really the three. Either out of way, five we episodes. was the boys was caffeinated. Yeah, you're gonna hear it. Anyways, uh, Mark, would you like to read this review? Sure. Is it because I have to read some words I don't know how to say? No, it's just because I read the last week's. I love it. Well, hey, so this review was left way back in July, which is awesome that we still haven't gotten close to catching up on I all our reviews it. yet. From Eric Lozano 33, it says, I stumbled upon this podcast on Spotify because I needed some encouragement to get me through the workday. At first, I wasn't sure if I would enjoy this podcast, but after listening to a few episodes, I found myself wanting more. I can relate to you guys, and your personalities are very entertaining. Thank you guys for what you do, and keep doing what you're doing. You didn't read the title, though. A Breath of Fresh Air. A Breath of Fresh Air. Dude, are we like the Minty Fresh? Like, are we stride gum? (laughs) Dirty mouth. Chew it up with the orbit. <laughs> oh, I forgot those. <laughs> the, man. Well, there's some good OG commercial, like OG They're Doritos, right. OG Orbits. Were I like the five gums. The five gums were Ooh, cool. Oh, yeah. Slim Jims five. were my all-time favorites. My though. favorite. Slim Jims my with Carrot Top. Fa- see, my favorite commercial was probably the... Right? Was Carrot Top Slim Jim? Was he, was, was he a spokesperson for Slim Jim? Carrot Top? I don't remember. I think Sean White was for a little I think bit. You're, I think you're right. But I saw Dr. Pepper with the, what's his face? The beef jerky with the, the Sasquatch. Yes. Okay, those were good. That was a hilarious. Too. I just laughed so hard. It's like the Mayhem commercial. It's, you can avoid Mayhem just like me. You know, the guy that gets hurt all the time. Mayhem was fan. He's all, all State has had some good ones over the years. Progressive. Got, the insurance companies. State Farm uh, with the fishing pole. Oh, oh, yeah. almost got it. Almost got that one. <laughs> like I, I, yeah. What's up with these insurance companies making some dumb know, commercials? But they're hilarious. I don't remember what they're it talking about, be, but they're funny commercials. We used to be scared to talk about our favorite commercials at the Christian school because they were always beer commercials and we'd oh, get in trouble. But the old so, OG, okay. like the, Bud Light commercials. So the best Budweiser commercial. Sorry, uh, I'm not I mean, promoting. I, I'm a sucker for the Clydesdales. I'm not. Dude, that's what I was gonna say. So the best one. Wait, it, wait, wait, it wait, 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 wait. Finish your thought first. Finish your thought there. You're not promoting. Say, I'm not promoting to go out and get smashed and hammered. Well, just no one's saying that. Just don't drink Budweiser. That so, crap's gross. So Budweiser commercial. Right? Don't drink Budweiser. It's gross. The, Cl- Cl- the Clydesdales. Bud Light's gross too, Joe. So, uh, so the it was a Super Bowl commercial. Okay, and. <laughs> Thinking about it, because I'm thinking about it, laughing. I'm texting Joe so right now. That I it's told him the that. Uh, it's the one where the uh, there's a zebra out, and he's got like he's looking at a replay. He's got like the hood over, and he's like looking into the screen or whatever. Okay. And there, <laughs> there's two cowboys, and the one cowboy goes, "That rest a jackpot," but he uses the other word, 
And the other cowboy goes, nope, I believe that's a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And it, I just died. I'm like, they did not just say that. That is awesome. It was the best Clydesdale the, commercial. Ever. I, I mean, I don't remember a lot of the commercials. I remember the, the, the heartfelt ones. Do you remember the Frogs Budweiser commercials? The Frogs? Yeah, they used to be like Bud. Why? Zerd. A little bit. You don't remember those? They were on the lily pa- pads. I and feel all like by t- and I don't remember most of the commercials, but by the time I remembered, I feel like a lot of them were more Bud Light mm. commercials. So my my aunt, because she liked Budweiser and she watched those commercials so much, or maybe it was her ex husband at uh, her husband at the time. Uh, but they had three cats, and they named one Bud, one White, and one Zer. And so they'd go Budweiser, and all three cats would run. It was hilarious. That is funny. It was epic. So I'm Anyways. talking about different types of Budweiser's. How do you stay faithful in your Christian walk? <laughs> Don't drink Budweiser. You know, we were we were going back and forth on different episodes because of just, you know, the holidays and a lot of the stuff that's going to be happening with Lennox. We're like, we got to just get a lot of episodes in the bank and try to record as much as we can. Right now, we're batch recording three episodes we're a night. Tonight. So I was like, how about we do one and we just have an honest conversation about just how do you stay faithful not me, you, Fuller. How do you, that's the whole episode. How do you stay faithful? We're not talking about me at all. Well, but, you know, but no, it started just like a basic conversation. Just So how do we stay faithful on our Christian walk? And so we kind of were just going back and forth and just like, hey, this is just a great one. Let's just come. Let's just chat about it. Let's just have a conversation. And you felt inspired and you wrote notes. I, you I, can't prepare for this episode. Was, and it was actually... I did like, not. I was thinking through it and then no, I started I, I thinking more. And I then like I was like, bro, out. I got some like things to say. So intentional guided things to say s- semi guided. So guided. The first thing I want to say is C.S. Lewis says <laughs> the first thing I want to say is something to C.S. Lewis. Says. That's a good thing. Speaking of uh, Lord of the Rings and Narnia. Yeah, we're bringing it back full circle, baby. So uh, C.S. Lewis says focus on giants. You stumble. That's Max Lucado, not C.S. Lewis. Focus on God. Giants tumble. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Max Lucado. You're right. I was reading. I missed his name. So that's what <laughs> Max Lucado said. Focus on giants. You stumble. Focus on God. Giants stumble. Usually I put a space in between those, but I don't know why I didn't. Uh, C.S. Lewis said, we must lay before him what is in us, not what ought to be within us. I really like that one. And then Charles Spurgeon says, faith and obedience are bound up in the same bundle. He that obeys God, trusts God. And he that trusts God, obeys God. He that is without faith is without works, and he that is without works is without faith. Well, you kind of like that back and forth, don't you? I do. But what's funny, though, is the fact of Bonhoeffer even has a quote that goes along that line. Speaking of Bonhoeffer, did you bring that one up, too? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, was it in here? No, I didn't. Okay, I just because there's sure. a classic one. There that, was some good ones um, in there. I had people actually get mad at our church for having this up on the church sign, and I had to take it down because they don't like having this in front of their face. It says only uh, only he who believes is obedient, and only he who is obedient believes. And so it kind of goes hand in hand of like you're basically put your money where your mouth is, or like what James says. You say you have faith, right? But I'm going to show you that I have faith, right? You you say you have faith without works, but I'm going to show you my faith by my works. And that's kind of you know it's kind of funny. We're just thinking about this big picture. You kind of put this in the question of how do you say faithful your beliefs with your walk, right? And and that struggle back and forth. So I know you got some notes, man. So I yeah, say let's so just go through I would your notes. Say, and, I would say I'll bring uh, some of my thoughts. How in. do you stay faithful in your Christian walk? Number one is yeah. be unwavering or steadfast in your belief in God. Be unwavering, unwavering or steadfast. That's what the little backslash is for. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew twenty four nine through fourteen says. Then they will hand you over to be persecuted, and they will kill you. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and the end will come. First Corinthians, ooh, I just touched you, the you wrong hit button. a button. Uh, First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight says, "Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain." Psalm fifty one ten through twelve says, "God, create and create a clean heart for me, and renew a steadfast spirit within me." Do not banish me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. And James 1, 12 says, Blessed is the one who endures trials because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So 
What does that mean to you, my good friend? When you think of being unwavering and steadfast in your belief to God, what does that mean to you? I mean, I know what it means, but then I have a I have a question coming out of it. So normally when I think it's unwavering, I think of like a I'll do a sport analogy, all right? Sure. Like, we are unwavering Notre Dame fans, right? Yes. Whether they're good, whether they're bad, whether they're doing great, whether they suck. The good times, the still, bad times. You're still sticking with it because that's Col- just where you A cold that's... Stanford game. It, oh, that was awful. <laughs> that was awful. But it's like, that's what I think of you're unwavering in sure. that. Or, like, you're unwavering in a conviction that you have. Like, kind of like, you know, the the Mac versus PC or the, the, the joke about the dogs or cats that we had earlier or, or right. types of cars. You know, when you're unwavering in your belief, you're the fact of... Nope, this is the truth. This is what I'm stating in, and I don't care what I don't care what the heck you have to say. It's, to me. It's I not, don't care. It's not being able to be swayed. Correct, and it's kind of like your feet are anchored in concrete. That's right. what I think. Like your feet, if you are steadfast, you can have your feet legit. Put them into concrete. You can't move, or like a fence post that's shoved into concrete. Right. It ain't going to be blown around when the wind shows up. It's going to be more anchored like, to something. Or like Scripture says, not being tossed to and fro. Right. Like you're as you're, a wave in the sea. Right, and that's talking about uh, uh, don't be unwave. Oh, it's, Goodness, it, um, it, it's about oh, what was it? Double, it's I, I'm, I'm like it Two Face, but I know that's right. that's that's right, Spider Man. I'll, I'll look it. He's <laughs> like Two Face. Um, but he's who's like uh, it's it's about going back and forth on your mind is is right. I think what it is is going from here to here. But you know this is kind of where the question comes. Like all right, so yeah, just be steadfast in your belief, man. But the, the kind of the question becomes okay. So what happens when you start having doubts about your faith? What happens when you start having the questions of? Is God real? Is God there? Can can God hear me? What happens when all the the people who are you know you're all over you're, you're on TikTok and you hear TikTok theology not in the good kind and they're just trying to debunk everything in Christianity? So then the question goes is how do you remain faithful when all those things are coming to you? And then how do you remember the works of God and how do you keep your eyes focused on Him when all the storms around you are going to and fro and you're starting to even ask the question of is this even real? I think mm. that's where it gets hard. It's easy to end the good times. Kind of like we're talking about that situation sure. that we were just talking about for the show where it's like, you know, when the good times are good, it's good. But then the bad times are bad. You're like, God, where are you? I thought you loved me. Well, and I think that's why you know? James said in James 1 12, blessed is the one who endures mm-hmm. trials, right? It's not the one who, you know, is excited about trials, who welcome trials. It's the one who endures. And what's that word endure means? It means like you're, you're you grind it out. You're man. You're having to really fight to get through it, but you're doing it right. You're right. enduring to the end. Uh, because when we t- uh, when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him, right? So it's not like um, the reward is not so much like we shouldn't be in it for a reward, but the reward is that um, if we remain faithful, if we remain unwavering and steadfast in those hard times, mm-hmm. that's where we um, where we actually find a reward on the other side. And I'm not saying the other side of death. I think it's the other side of the trial. Like, I know this is talking about, James is talking about the other side, like, of eternity, right? That's where you're going to find the crown of life and the, to those who promised, or that he promised to those who love him. But I'm saying, like, when you see how faithful God is to you, um, in so much so that as we were sinners, Christ died for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's Romans 5? No. No. And while we're still sinners, Romans. Christ died for us. Yeah, what what is that? What passage is that? Here in his love, it that's first John. Is it first John? First John four. Yeah, okay. Uh but that's what that's a reward for us here, right? That we can see that um that that he died for us and we can take solace in that promise that when we were sinners, when we mess up, when we fail, um, as long as we continue to press on and continue the race, uh it shows that he's already paid the penalty and the price for us. Right? Yeah, and it's going to get hard. And that's the thing is the fact of it's going to get hard. Life is not going to be easy. And like I, I actually taught at junior high chapel ECA the other week. And Ephesians four, by the way, was that two and fro fourteen? Yes, yes. Ephesians four fourteen. Um, and so we were talking about Psalm seventy seven in there and asking the question of what do you do when it feels like God's not listening? Oh, yeah. What do you feel like when God's not picking up the phone? When God ain't texting you back? When God just seems to have ghosted you? What do you do? And, you know, in that psalm, I'm going to read it real quick, not sure, the whole psalm, but it talks about, um, now maybe I'll read the whole psalm because it kind of has a point. It says, I cried aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. I sought the Lord in my day of trouble. My hands were continually lifted up all night long. So he's saying, I'm going to cry to God and he will hear me. Um, and it says, I sought the Lord in my day of trouble. My hands were continually lifted up all night long, but I refused to be comforted. I think of God, I groan. 
I meditate, my spirit becomes weak. You have kept me from closing my eyes. I am troubled and I can't speak. I consider the days of old, years long past. At night, I remember my music. I meditated my heart and my spirit ponders. Will the Lord reject me forever and never show me favor? Has his faithful love ceased for forever and his promise at the end for all generations? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? And in this verse, the, the, the idea is the fact of what happens when we don't hear from God. And the first is it's inevitable. It will happen. Like there's going to be times where you cry out to God and, and you're like, oh, he'll hear me, he'll hear me. And you're like, are you going to forsake me forever? Like, you know, this psalm has got to this point of saying God, he's, that God's not talking back. Okay. But is he not talking back or is he giving the answer we just don't like it and not listening? Well, it continues. It continues. So right. I, I won't answer for that one. But then the second one is the fact of um, when it happens, it's going to hurt. Like when you see the psalmist, he's like, I, I couldn't be comforted. I, my eyes couldn't close. I felt sick. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't talk. I couldn't do anything because I was so just distraught. And it says, you know, has God forsaken to be gracious? Has he in his anger withheld his compassion to me? And so, you know, I kind of had the thought of like, okay, so what happens, not just what happens, but truths about not hearing from God is A, it's going to happen. B, it's going to hurt. And C, it's going to cause you to doubt your belief in God. So I think that there are things there, but then the question is, is I what think that's did a general do? statement, though, that can't be generalized. What do you Cause, mean? Because not everybody will doubt. It, it can ha- It's going to happen. It can hurt, but it doesn't mean that there's necessarily everybody's going to doubt either. That's a generalization that I don't think can be there. I'll give you that one. But I'm, just I also saying, do, like, I'm not saying that it won't happen for some. Right. I'm just saying I don't think we can generalize it and say. But I think it's, it's not like sit there down, but I'm done with God forever. But you start to have those doubts of like he started having the doubts of, okay. have you forgotten me? Are you angry at me? Okay. Has, your, so, has your faithful love ceased? Right. Have you rejected your so favor? That's, Will that, you never show up That's again? the psalmist, right? And, right? and I get that that's what it's coming from the psalmist. But to say that that because we know somebody personally who has not lost who has not had doubt, who has not been unwavered and going through a tr- hard, a very hard trial right now. And yet he still finds his hope and peace and rest in God through mm-hmm. this hard trial. And then the question then and is, is unwavering and steadfast in his belief. Right. And so then the question then becomes is like, like, like this person, I know who, who you're talking about. Right. So what do you do in those problems though? When the trials come up and the storms come and he continues on, he says, you know, I'm going to remember the works of God. I remember the days of old. I'm going to sure. look back and remember all the promises that God made to his Israel. Cause right. he's David. He's look back at Abraham, look back at Noah, look back at Moses and says, God kept all his promises there. He's kept all his promises in my life. He's going to keep his promises moving forward too. Right. And so like for me, when I have this unwavering steadfastness in your belief in God, you know, it's kind of going back to the idea of trials are going to happen. We're going to go through trials, but at the same time, like what James says, blessed is the one who endures trials. Right. Like it's going to be hard, but how do you go through those trials? You remember the works God has already done in history, in your life. In Hebrews, you looked unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, you look to the saints because we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us saying, hey, we did it. You can do it too. Right. And so how do we remain steadfast steadfast in your belief in God is the fact that you remember who God was, his promises, his nature, and just who he is. Yeah. And you see how that's worked in your own life and go, well, if that happened back then, it can happen right now. Sure. I just don't know the big picture what's going on. Sure. Yeah. And I would say uh, to tag on to that, I mean, there's other things that you can do, right? The church is is supposed to be more. We talked about this. It's more than just a community. It's the family of God, right? Mm-hmm. We laugh together. We cry together. We pray for one another. We love one another, right? So that's that leaning Leaning and gleaning is what I like to say, right? Leaning and gleaning, baby. I like that. You may be weak and I may be strong. I may be weak. You may be strong, but we lean and we glean from each other, right? You're happy. Man, I'm kind of down right now, but you know what? I'm so glad you're happy. So that kind of gives me a little bit of joy of how happy you are. And likewise, I'm sad. And it kind of at the same time, man, you kind of a little bit sad for me, a little bit brokenhearted. So we lean on each other. We glean from each other. You can also... uh, Press in with prayer. I think we do not. Um, I, I, I think we, we, Let's just be we honest. under we call a spade a spade. I'm terrible. Well, at and I think that's the problem, right? I think that we uh, underestimate the power of prayer. If you look at all the great theologians, all the great saints of the day, they were enthralled with prayer first. That personal one-on-one relationship with Christ. They prayed diligently without prayer. What is there, right? 
is God a magic genie that we just call upon him in our hard times? Well, he's going to say, well, who are you? I don't have a relationship with you. We don't talk. You don't, you don't pray. You pray when the times are bad, but not when the times are good. You look to, to, for me to help you in times of agony and pain, but in times of joyfulness and happiness, you want nothing to do with me. Is that a relationship built on love? Well, that's something you got to answer for yourself. The third thing I would suggest is dig into the word, right? God has given us so many answers already to most of, not all of our problems, but most of our problems, right? Most of our woes of, man, um, you know, I'm just feeling really down. Well, look back at uh, God's promises in his word. Hey, I promised I'm never going to leave you forsake you. I know the hairs on your head. If I take care of the flowers and the fields and the birds in the air, how much more will I take care of you who I love, right? There's all these promises of God that go to the people and his children and those who he loves. But if you're not in the scripture, how are you going to be reminded of those things, right? And that's what the Israelites did with the names of God. It was to right. remember the nature of like the God who hears right. and the God who's present and right. the God who's before me and the right. God who's with me. Right, exactly. And so these are these are the things that, you know, yeah, we can look back on on the good times. And I agree that that is a, another huge thing that you hit on was look back at the times when God was faithful. Look at the times when you were close, right? That should excite you and invigorate you to get want to get back to those times. But how do you do that? Through prayer, uh, diligent prayer, mm -hmm. intentional prayer, through scripture, reading his word, learning his promises, and through family of God, community, right? Leaning on each other, gleaning from each other. Um, you may be able to share something with me that I wasn't, I mean, I was feeling down and then you shared, Hey, I was reading this in scripture today. And it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Like, and it kind of picks me up. So, and likewise, same for, for me to you, you know, it, it just goes all the way around. So those were the things that I would say could help you, uh, be unwavering and steadfast in your belief. Yeah, and I think also it's it, it can go back to what you put in your mind. And I know this isn't going to sure. something you're going to talk about here in a little bit, but you know if we're constantly putting junk in and listening to junk all the time, and I'm not talking like on a, on a stand for just music, I'm talking about what you listen to in terms of the influence that is around you, yeah. the podcast you listen to, right. the music the music you listen sure. to, the teaching you listen to, the advice you're given. Yeah. You know, if we're constantly, the Bible says, you know, don't be conformed to the image of this world, but, but be transformed, be transformed by the, the renewing of your mind. And in doing such, that's how you keep your mind focused on Jesus is the constant renewal of your mind. Right. Which kind of goes yeah. into, you know, what you're trying to talk about here. Number two, well, yeah, your, so, your, your, your little note, number two. So, so number two, I would say of, I got to keep remembering the title, how to, how to stay faithful in your Christian walk. We're professionals guys. I, I just got to remember how we keep working it is uh, separate yourself. Exactly what you're saying. Separate yourself from the world's thoughts and patterns and practices. So often we get, uh, we get caught up. I don't say we intentionally as Christians go out and seek these, but we get caught up in, in um, the, the, the thoughts, patterns, and practices of the world. I'm so guilty of this. I'm so guilty of, of just being like, oh, I'm going to scroll on Facebook and just check, like, I'm just going to check the Facebook group, you know, Real Talk Christian Community page real fast. And it's like, okay, I want to watch this video. Oh, and there's another video. Oh. And there's another video. Oh, and they, and there's got you. An, and they got you, right? Yeah, so I get caught up in it. So uh, Philippians 3, 16 through 21 says, In case we should live up to whatever truth we have attained, join in imitating me, brothers and sisters, and pay careful attention to those who live according to the example you have in us. For I have often told you, and now are saying again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is their shame. And they focus on earthly uh, things. Our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly wait for a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glory, glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. So if you live in the accordance to others, we, we, we see the ways of the world, right? And, and we talked about their end is destruction, right? Their, their God is their stomach. Uh, their glory is their shame. The things that they're like, oh, look at me. I'm, I'm so, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we get into the, the bougie 
bougie. talk next week. How bougie is too but, bougie. But their, the glory, right? The the hey, look at me. Uh, is to their shame and their focus on earthly uh, on their earthly things is going to end up in their destruction. But our citizenship in heaven, we should be we, uh, eagerly awaiting the Savior, and we should be imitating Christ, even as Paul did, right? And that's and that's what we should be doing. So Romans twelve one through two, we just talked about this. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. You want to know what God's will is? There you go. <laughs> so uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 14 through 18, do not be yoked together with those who do not believe for what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness or what fellowship does light have with darkness? What agreement does Christ have with Belial or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? And what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And God said, I will dwell and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch any unclean thing, and I will welcome you, and I will be a uh, father to you, and you will be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Now, first, I can hear people going, but Chris, it's supposed to be in the world. You're supposed to be in the world. D didn't you want to listen to your own episodes? <laughs> Don't you listen to this? And I'm like, yes, we are supposed to be in the world, but we are not supposed to do what the world does. There's a difference, right? So we've been talking about this at Southside, that, and and you can't. You you were supposed to be in the world, but not part of the world. And what I mean by that is that we're in the world. We're being that that salt. We're being that light on a on a hill. We're being the light that shines before men that they see our good works and glorify our Father, right? Not glorify us, but glorify our Father in heaven. They're not focusing in on us. So we are so different. We are so set apart. We are holy, which means set apart, that uh, we are not, we are, we are obviously different from the world, but yet still functioning within the world. So, Matthew, but let me oh, let me let me let me stop right here with this right, one too, because I was looking up uh, an article because I was like, man, this this gives me a thought, you know. Yeah, go when for we're it. talking about being yoked together, I mean, the idea was the fact of when you're plowing a field, you want to have two equal, you know, bowls or whatever pulling this thing, because if you got a big old bowl and then you got a little old like you got tink on the other <laughs> thing, you're, tink's, you're tink's my little Pomsky. Uh, like if you husband. got a if you got a big old bowl on one side, then your Pomsky on the other, they're not going to go straight because they're not pulling together right. in the same direction. It's the idea of the fact of who are you hitching yourself with to go through life. Right. And you know, there's a lot of research out there where I mean, the, it's it's the whole idea of show me your friends and I'll show you your future, like right, that exactly. whole push out. But there's also a lot of stats that show that you will be most like the most five people you put yourselves around. Everything from finances. Like you will actually like, like if you surround your like let, let, I don't want to say if you're poor, but like if you're like lower middle class and you go surround yourself with like super rich people that you want to be like, you'll probably end up being like them. Same with people who are super fit in fitness because you just start to navigate towards what they're pulling you in to do. Right. Same with they even have stats for obesity, for smoking, for good things, for bad things, just all these different temperaments. Because the idea of what they're trying to say is whatever your ecosystem of your social sphere is, that's the tendency and navigations you're going to pull to and you proverbs know? talks about that a lot and we're going to talk about that a lot next week but it's kind right. of like you know what we're talking about um with, with various situations that are going on with with family and ourselves and whatnot where it's like we see people and it's like you keep making terrible decisions but is that because of who you're surrounding yourself by now of course you gotta own up to your own decisions sure but i'm thinking for like for for me if i am sitting there wanting to exercise and work out but i'm always around people who just don't and don't well, want to do whatever i'm not going to be more inclined to be pulled that way in the same way if you're it, surrounding it, yourself with people of faith right you're gonna be more pulled in that direction and, of keeping your eyes on jesus rather than people who are not and doing the complete opposite and i see it happening all the time though like people that don't normally drink right i see this all the time at work people who don't drink they're around a bunch of people that speaking about lo love to love to drink drink all the time right and so what do they end up doing? It's not even peer pressure. Nobody's telling them to drink a beer, but they they, they drink it. That's osmosis effect. And then they start drinking another, and then they drink another. And, and why? 
Why? Because of the environment, the, the ecosystem in which they surrounded themselves with. That's the thing that the ecosystem is And the big one, doing. like with the, 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 the chef world with smoking is a huge one because right. of your smoke breaks and all these right. different things. Yeah, because you don't get a break other unless you t- smoke it. And you start talking how like the people you're surrounded right. by. You start thinking like it. You yep. start spending your time and money on certain things. And not so, that we yeah. shouldn't as Christians. And we're not harp. I mean, it's no, just no. a reality, but it's a yeah, fact. No, but, it's a fact. It's a reality. As Christians, we should we should still interact with the world, but that shouldn't be our ecosystem. Right. That's what we're saying. Right. Because so, you're hooked up to the wrong thing. If you're trying to go, you're trying to be pushed towards Jesus and you're right. other people go out running with you. That's a lot. That's, that's hard. Right. So Matthew 5, 13 through 16, which I just mentioned says you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything, but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. This means what we said all the time. What? Being useful. Being useful. You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So... How do we separate yourself from the world, thought patterns, and practices? We'll get back to this. I know this episode's already running long, but we're going to keep going with it. So how, how do we separate ourselves? I, I think it, it goes back to what you were just saying. We make sure our ecosystem is that of the same yoke as what we need to be, which is imitators of Christ. Mm-hmm. If the people you hang around with most, admire most, spend the most time with, talking to the most – are not of that same mindset of being imitators with Christ, I would call for you to re-examine who, and what I would your say ecosystem if is. You're, who you're choosing to be with. Yeah, because you can't Because like with work, work, you right. can't always control no, that. But, you but can't what always I'm saying, control school. What I'm saying is if well, your, your ecosystem of, of choice, right? Right. So what you're choosing, I would say, if you're doing that, right, and that you're being unequally yoked, as we saw uh, in Second Corinthians, that at that point you need to look at the ecosystem you've chosen and start really questioning. And I think that goes back to, you know, for the rhythms that we talked about with the Advent season, trying to work yeah. through what good rhythms to have. This is why having a rhythm of church Sunday morning, maybe small group during the week, podcast Thursday morning, like other, like create these rhythms. Sure. So that way the people you're surrounding yourself with, and that's what we're hoping with a Facebook group can be too, is maybe some friendships can be made inside of that. Yeah, definitely. Where it's other people who are going along the same trajectory and goal and vision for their life. You know, you want people to surround yourself with that in your life too. Right. So, uh, what's another way that, uh, can we can stay, stay faithful, faithful in our Christian walk. Uh, the third thing I would say is to choose to do what is right. It's a choice. It's you got, you got to choose to do right. Cause if we're left to our own nature, we choose to do what <laughs> is like wrong. It's like that mug that just uh, the the mission of where just kicked out with, where it says, "Do not listen to your heart." No, no, don't follow your heart. Don't don't follow your like, heart. Like there's that little, it's a cute little campfire mug and a cute little font. It says, "Don't follow your heart." Yeah. So Psalm thirty four <laughs> thirteen through fourteen says, "Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceitful speech. Turn away from evil and do what is good. Seek peace." And pursue it. First Corinthians ten thirty one through thirty three says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I also tried to please everyone in everything, not seeking my own benefit, but the benefit of many, so that they may be saved. And that doesn't mean that he's gonna go out and go to the brothel. That's not what he's talking about here. <laughs> Probably not. So Galatians five sixteen through 26 says, I say then walk by the spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh for the flesh desires what is against the spirit and the spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, moral impurity, Uh, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. That's pretty much any sin. I am warning you about these things as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So I would say choose to do what is right. How do we do that? Walk in the Spirit. That's that's the best way, right? Prayer, Bible, church family, ecosystem. Yeah, you know, I, like I talk about this with the kids quite a bit is the fact of we'll, we'll say, well, why did you do that? And they're like, because my sister did this. And we're like, that's not a good enough That's excuse. not a good answer. Sure, should your sister have done that to you? No. But, you know, you got to own up to your own actions and you have to choose what is right. You know, it's not like we're going to stand before God one day and he's going to be like, so what did you do? I don't know, man. These people were just jerks to me. So I was just tired of it. So I was doing it. And it's like, no, 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 no. What did, what did you do? Cause right. the Bible says, you know, the seek after the, the, the calling of good job, good and faithful servant, right? Like that's the calling that we have is to be a servant of God. And if we're servants and if we're ambassadors of God and we're representing God, we need to live our life for God, right? which means choosing to do the right thing, even when a, no one else is doing it, right. B when you're going to get persecuted for it and then C, um, just because that's what you're called to do as a Christian. Right, yeah, is to be in, into obedience with God, which leads us into point number four. Do, 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 do. Love your neighbors in obedience to God. This is another way we can stay faithful uh, in just our Christian Just do what walk, Jesus has commanded. Right? It's just, <laughs> it's pretty simple. So Matthew 25, 34 through 46, I know it's a long one. Stay with Let's me. do it, baby. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when we did, uh, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and take you in? Or without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the, the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. I was naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not take care of me. Then they will, they too will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or without clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Man, if that doesn't hit you between the eyes, I don't know what will. All right. I don't think that one needs any explanation, but we're going to go into nope. Romans 13, 8 through 10. Do not owe any anyone anything except to love one another. For the one who loves one uh, loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not uh, commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet. And any other commandment are summed up by this commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Not, not, not to do away with, but the fulfillment. Mm -hmm. The completion. The completion. So Matthew 5, 43 through 48, this is the last verse I have, says, You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of the Father in heaven. For he causes his son his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what, what reward will you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same thing? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what are you doing out of the ordinary? Don't even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So love your neighbors love so, so your let's, let's start to wrap this up a little bit yeah. so we talked about some different principles that you can have to stay faithful in your christian walk but you know to kind of to bring it into our personal lives a little bit i think it'd be fair for us just to spend a couple minutes to just say so when you wrap all these thoughts up i mean is 
is, I mean, I know for you, these are a lot of your notes. So this is how you remain faithful is right. you stay steadfast. You pursue Jesus. You surround yourself with good people. You do what's right. And you love your neighbor as the same way for yourself. But I think you love it, God and love others. And, two but, commandments. I, and I, but I think it, it, it all goes back for me of going back to not just being steadfast in Jesus or steadfast in, in God in, 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 in God and who he is. But the biggest thing for me that I've gone back to year after year after year after year of dealing with doubts and questions, different things that I go back to, okay, so what is the truth? Not what is truth, not philosophically, but sure. what is the truth? What's, what's the truth of all these things we have out there in the world that, you know, I've studied a lot of different faiths and I studied a lot of different cultures, but it all comes back to, for me, is the fact of, I believe that we have enough evidence that proves that Jesus rose again from the dead. Sure. And if, and, and if homeboy uh, died and rose again, like he said, he's going to, I probably should listen to what he has to say. Cause you don't, you don't just rise again from the dead. Like if, if a dude rise again from the dead, I'm, I'm going to follow you because I'm going to, I'm going to do what you, what you tell me to do. Cause you must be God if that's what it is. And he's forgiving sins and he's doing all these different things. And so I start with the fact of, I have enough belief in proof and evidence that Jesus rose again from the dead. So that means that whatever Jesus taught, I want to follow Jesus taught. Where do I sure. find where Jesus taught? Well, the 12 disciples that were closest to him. What else did Jesus knew? He knew the Torah stinking well. He knew the prophets and the law phenomenally well. He preached all those different things. So if it comes back to the fact of, you know, so just what is the truth for me? It's I believe in the truth of Jesus, which points forward to him coming again. And it points back to what we read through the Old Testament of how God created the things. Oh, Advent? <laughs> there you go. But, you know, a lot of the, 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 the surety that I have is whether or not I feel like a Christian, this isn't, don't misquote me on this. Whether or not I feel like a Christian in the moment doesn't matter to me, to be honest with you. That's just me. It's the fact of what's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is, is Jesus is who he said he was. He died. He rose again. He ascended into heaven. His disciples were witnesses to it. The whole world was changed because of it. I want to follow that man. Sure. I want to follow him. And sure. so what does that mean then when I follow him? And a lot of that goes back into what it is, is the fact of, okay, I'm going to follow you. I put my faith and trust in you. So what does that mean? It means I'm going to love my neighbor as myself. I'm going to love God. I'm going to love my kids. I'm going to love those in my surrounding in my community. And if you're going to stay close to Jesus, you got to fight to stay close to Jesus, you know? Right. And that's where, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not very good at it. Yeah. Well, it's all about intentionality, right? Mm -hmm. you, you say you love someone. If you really love someone, you intentionally seek out to spend time with them, mm -hmm. right? Like you and Beth, right? You didn't just say, hey, try. hey, Beth, I love you. And then, and then never never talked to her and never went down to Tennessee to see her or any, any of that. You think you guys would be I married? I had put effort in. You guys think you'd be married today? Probably you not. think had you guys not drove back and forth, you'd be married today? Probably not. No, because you guys were intentional about your relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way we need to be intentional with God, right? And, and if... If you remember, think back, right? You talked about looking back in the past, what mm -hmm. the psalmist was saying. So look back to your past at those times where you were intentionally seeking God. Were you closer or further away than you are now? Closer. Exactly. So it's that intentionality, right? It's that discipline that we talked about. It's that that rhythm that Pastor Michael talked about. Mm -hmm. You got to get in and that rhythm. And there's certain things that I've done. Like, I mean, intentionally, like, I mean, this is going to sound really funny, but like I have the tattoo of the Cairo on my forearm to remind me that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Every day it's a reminder I intentionally wear my WWJD braces to be like, how would Jesus live in this moment? So I do these really quirky things. Sure. I also, I mean, again, this, uh, my, my brother-in-law got me this from Rome, but I actually have a crucifix on my decks. Like, like the actual like necklace, like the rosary. I have a rosary. I have a rosary on my desk and I see it all the time. I'm like, yeah, that's what Jesus did for me. And sometimes I'll see it. I'll say the Lord's prayer. It will remind me to be like, no, this, this is who I'm living for. And I, I was even telling Beth this. It's like, you know, I feel like as a husband, I'm not great in, helping bring her before God to which she'll say, I, I don't need you. I'm, I'm, I'm just as much a child of his as you are. But at the same time as, well, as a husband, you know, trying to your, pray for Beth and to, it is your calling. It is though. my calling. I believe it too, but it's, it's, I have a personal struggle. I'm just being very yeah. vulnerable. No, yeah, I, I struggle with that sure. bad. I know yeah. we've had a lot of conversations sure. around that where it's, you know, you're not going to necessarily, I don't want to say it's like, oh, you're not going to see me ever do this. That's not true. But the idea of like, you know, leading my kids in devotions and trying to have these intentional, intense times, and I'm not very good at it. So I try to do a lot like what Co what our, our buddy Cotney says, where the fact of you don't have to have this moment of discipleship, but make discipleship a rhythm. Sure. Going back to rhythms, you know, when you're talking, your teaching kids are asking moments. questions, teaching moments. And, you know, my kids ask some really, really, really good questions. Sure. And so that causes me to think, reflect, answer, and then go, well, shoot, am I living in accordance with what I just told them? 
<laughs> right. You know, and so there's nothing more humbling than having to answer a kid or apologize to a kid or anything like that. Oh, yeah. You know, but staying faithful in your walk with Christ, you know, I, I go back to that Bonhoeffer quote all the time where only the obedient believe and only those who are the only those who obey believe and only, only the obedient believe. And staying faithful in your Christian walk, working out your own fear with, you know, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There's work that we got to do to put into this. Not work to be saved, not work to be justified, not right. work to be redeemed. It's to have that relationship. To have that relationship, yeah. That intentionality, yeah. That's, that, that's, so. that's my final thoughts, man. What you got, homie? My, my final thoughts are going to be real easy. I'm just going to read another scripture and right. a couple quotes and call it a day because this is something that uh, I love this psalm, Psalm 136. Um, it, it reminds you a lot of his promises, of God's promises of, of faithfulness, right? And so that's why I want to read this. Uh, so you can stay faithful and unwavering in your Christian walk. Remember these promises. So even if you don't want to, you know, go back and read it, go to our, the hour mark, go to the, the hour, hour mark, mark, and then you can listen to these promises. So Psalm 136, 1 through 26, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endures forever. He alone does great wonders. His faithful love endures forever. He made the heavens skillfully. His faithful love endures forever. Are you guys getting a the theme here yet? I say I'm like, his faithful love endures forever. Like he that rhythm and that cadence, he, man. <laughs> he spread the land on the waters. His faithful love endures forever. He made the great lights. His faithful love endures forever. The sun to rule by day. His faithful love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule at, by night. His faithful love endures forever. He struck the firstborn of the Egyptians and his faithful, uh, his faithful love endures forever. I can see this almost as like a song. And brought, well, yeah, Chris Tomlin forever. And, and brought Israel and brought Israel out from among his among them. His faithful love endures forever. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. it is a song. But, These, I mean, right. the, the yeah. Psalms are a. I know, but I, the Israel song. But I, I can hear it all. <laughs> like the tambourine. Supposed to be reading it, Sorry, man. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, with with a strong hand and outstretched arm, his faithful love endures forever. He divided the Red Sea. His faithful love endures forever, and led Israel through his faith. Uh, and led Israel through his faithful love endures forever. But hurled Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His faithful love endures forever. He led his people in the wilderness. His faithful love endures forever. He struck down great kings. His faithful love endures forever. And slaughtered famous kings. His faithful love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites. His faithful love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan. His faithful love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his faithful love endures forever as an inheritance to Israel, his servant, his faithful love endures forever. He remembered us in our humiliation, his faithful love endures forever and rescued us from, from our foes. His faithful love endures forever. Are you looking this up to make sure I'm quoting it right? Nope. Oh, he gives food to every creature. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever. And then the two quotes I got, unless you got something. Well, I was, was going to ask, so going back to that Psalm 77, the never finished, you know, David says, God, your way is holy. What God is great like you? You are the God who works wonders. You revealed your strength among the peoples. With your power, you redeemed the people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Um, and even says, I will reflect on all that you have done and meditate on all your actions. Going back another verse, I remember the Lord's works. Yes, I will remember your ancient wonders. And you just read all of them, man. Yeah. Just kind of combined to remember what God has done. His faithful love endures forever. There you go, bro. So uh, and people say they don't like 7-Eleven worship songs that repeat all the time. Yeah. <laughs> man, they never read this psalm. Welcome to the psalms. No, uh, so Chuck Swindoll says, Vision is the ability to, the ability to see God's presence, to perceive God's power, to focus on God's plan in spite of the obstacles. And Warren Wearsby Pastor Scott's favorite. The remedy for discouragement is the word of God. When you feed your heart and your mind with its truths, you regain your perspective and find renewed strength. Time for Fun Facts with Fillmore. <laughs>
<laughs> well, we didn't quite stay under an hour. No, today. we didn't stay under an hour, but that's all right, man. That's we right. had a good conversation. We hopefully, did. you guys felt a little close. Not a little close, but maybe you felt like we were hopefully coming alongside you in the process. So that Definitely. way you can say maybe one day your faithful loves endure forever. Yeah, dude, where it's going to be stuck in our heads. Isn't yes, it? <laughs> I got Chris Tomlin on repeat in my head. His love well, dude, endures forever. Bingo. Yeah. So, so the fun fact, fun of, fact the of the day. day. So this one's kind of a little disturbing, but it is it about meatloaf? Yeah, well, it's kind of funny. Oh, so, okay. But so it's not about meatloaf. No. Okay. As St. Lawrence was roasted on a gridiron. So it is about meatloaf. By the, perf- <laughs> the by the sorry, pre- that was really bad. I'm sorry. Okay, start over. That was really bad. <laughs> that was that was bad. He was roasted on a fire. And His love endures forever, but maybe not after that. That was me. that was a little bad. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. That, Go ahead. That was really. That was really bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready for bed. Go, go, okay. Continue. As St. Lawrence was roasted on the gridiron by the prefect of Rome during the persecution of Christians. I'm looking at you. My you, mic's you, over there. You and your bad jokes. Nope. Legend says he cheerfully declared, I'm well done on this side. Turn me over. Because of this, he derives his patronage of cooks, chefs, and comedians. What? I'm done. Wow, hey, yeah, I'm all done on this side, homie. Can you flip me? So he became the patron saint of <laughs> not only just chefs, but of the funny people of the world, yeah. too. His patronage of cooks, chefs, and comedians. Wow. I'm well done on this side. Turn me over. <laughs> That's I, a fun fact. I thought it would. It's Church a sad, history. It's a sad fact. Making a, a joke. F- but it's a fun fact. I mean, come on. There's got to be a little humor in the vacuum. They're like, all right, guys, check this out. We have a patron saint for the cooks, but he's also for the he's also for the funny peoples. Like, come on, man, that is that that's kind of funny. That's one way to stay faithful in your Christian walk, definitely, right there. Definitely. Stay until the end. Well, speaking of sticking around till the end, we are thankful that you guys, for some reason, stick around with us till the end every single episode, even through the bad jokes, even through the bad jokes and the really weird banter that has absolutely nothing to do with nothing. Y'all are still here for it. And we love it. And we would love it for you to continue the conversation and the engagement over in our Facebook group. We are almost 500 strong at time of recording back here in October. And so hopefully we'll be up to the 2000 mark by the time Christmas comes around. That's a joke. That's really bad. And if you haven't yet go over to our YouTube page where you can subscribe and hit the bell notification. Ding. Where 506 other people have already subscribed and Hopefully become more. part of that family. And uh, if you haven't yet left a review on Apple Podcasts, That'd be nice. please do so now or on Spotify. You can leave us a rating. You can go right when you're listening. And it's still Advent season. So if you have not signed up for the Advent devotionals, go to the Real Talk Christian Podcast.com. That pop up will show up. Put in your name, your email, click send. And just like that, you will be subscribed to those emails to receive the Advent devotionals and if you miss any of the devotionals just reach out to us we'll be more than happy to send those your way and if you're listening to this podcast probably somewhere in the summer because uh you you found rtc way too late welcome to the party anyways and you're like man i love to have those devotionals too well now you got to wait till the next christmas yeah maybe we'll do it every christmas. <laughs> but uh reach out to us you can find rewinders. everything and every information uh search bar all that stuff for all our episodes stuff. at realtalkchristianpodcast.com love it man well hey we love you guys and until next time take it easy